So today, lesson 36A, distributive property and factoring. Uh, today you're going to be able to factor expressions using the greatest common factor, and that's going to be the key thing right there. And then double check to make sure you did what you were supposed to do by multiplying it out uh, using the distributive property. We will continue to state distributive property problems correctly. And uh, this is the very beginning of something that we will do next year, which is uh, factoring polynomials. You'll do that in 8th grade and ninth grade and 10th um, grade. All right, so let's get started here. Here's what we've been working on lately, except we yesterday we took it to decimals and fractions, where we worked on how to state distributive property problems correctly, like 5 times the quantity of x plus 3 is equivalent to 5x plus 15, and so on. All right, and then background knowledge from sixth grade. One of the things you did in the sixth grade or you were supposed to do was finding the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor can be thought of as the largest number that divides evenly into other numbers. And I, I, I'm very aware that, you know, everybody can do this mentally, and that's exactly why it says mentally. So what is the GCF uh, between 15 and 12? Just tell me, please. Three. It's 3. It's the largest number that divides into both of those numbers evenly. Uh, how about between 30 and 42? It is, six. it is 6. And all of these are in your notes. Can you go ahead and finish off 3 through 5 very quickly? All right, uh, between 14 and 21, the GCF or greatest common factor is 7. Between 24 and 36, it is what? I heard a few of you say 6, and that's going to be an issue today. We need to make sure we find not just a common factor, but the greatest common factor, which should be 12 there. And between 50 and 15, tell me, please. It is 5. Okay. Next. Finding the missing factor. Um, what's the missing factor here? Four. It's 4. 8 and 4 are what we call factors of 32 because they have a product of 32. In fact, there are lots of numbers that are factors of 32, and we don't have to restrict it to just whole numbers. There are lots of factors of 32. Uh, find the missing factor here. What is it for number 7? So 4 and 12 are factors of 48, and so on. Go ahead and finish off that row. And uh, obviously, this is not something very complicated, but we're putting together ideas that you learned in previous grades so that you can understand what we are really doing today. And what we are really doing today is factoring something, so we're breaking it down into factors that will multiply together to make something else. So obviously, in number 8, the missing factor is 8. In number 9, the missing factor is 40. Number 10, the missing factor is 6. And number 11, the missing factor is 11. 12 and 11 are factors of 132. All right. So in number 12, we're trying to break 8x plus 12 into two things that multiply together to make 8x plus 12. In other words, we're trying to break it down into two factors of 8x plus 12. In some respects, we can think of it like this. We're trying to create a distributive property problem that when we multiply it out, 8x plus 12 will be the answer. But the key thing here is that the GCF has to be on the outside of the parentheses, okay? So once again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a distributive property problem such that it will multiply out to become 8x plus 12, but the number that has to be on the outside has to be the GCF. Now, you should have done problems like this last year. So what's the GCF between uh, 8 and 12? Four. It's 4. So 4 needs to be on the outside of the parentheses. So now we just have to think about this. What do we have to multiply 4 by to make 8x? 
Tell me, please. Two. Not two. Two x. This has addition in it, and then what do we have to multiply two by to make twelve? Three. Somebody said three. Most of or most one of you said six. Most of you said three. So that means eight x plus twelve factors into four times the quantity of two x plus three. So four is a factor of eight x plus twelve, but two x plus three is also a factor of 8x plus 12. And once again, one way of, uh, to think of this is backwards distributive property. So we have 4 times the quantity of 2x plus 3, and once again, uh, 4 and 2x plus 3, both of them are factors of 8x plus 12. Could I get you to go ahead and try numbers 13 through 16? And uh, once again, all of the problems really up until uh, number 19 in the notes today, these were all really sixth grade problems. The new addition this year is what do you do when you have fractions and decimals within the expression? All right, exchange answers with your shoulder partner. Uh, please notice that we do have a sentence frame up here. And uh, the ones will take the odds, the twos will take the evens. Go. All right, so let's go through these. I like that uh, most of you were stating your answers correctly, like, for example, number 12. I determined that the factored expression is 4 times the quantity of 2x plus 3. And in number 13, I determined that the factored expression is 7 times the quantity of c minus 3. And in number 14, we should end up with 2 times the quantity of 6w plus 7. So I'm going to stop for a second because here's what happens. As the numbers get bigger within your expression, the numbers within the terms get bigger, uh, sometimes uh, it gets a little harder to find the GCF. And sometimes it, uh, some people are a little unclear of whether they really have the GCF on the outside or not. But there's a quick way of checking, and that is this. Um, if you look at what you have inside the parentheses, uh, there better not be anything that those two items, or sometimes we even have expressions with more than two terms, but you need to make sure that whatever you have inside the parentheses, there is no factor that they have in common other than one. So if you look at 6w and 7, they only have one in common. That's it. So that means that we truly did get the GCF on the outside. And then obviously in our head, we should quickly multiply it out just to make sure that it does make what we're trying to create here, okay? All right, number 15 uh, should be 5 times the quantity of 4y minus 3, and number 16 should be 3 times the quantity of 2y minus 7. All right, so now go ahead and do 17, 18, and 19. So number 17 should be 3 times the quantity of 3d plus 7. Number 18 should be 3 times the quantity of 9h minus 5. And then that brings us to number 19. Somebody over here, I won't point them out, but here's what they had the first time. Then they went, oh wait, that's not right. Then they did this. And while both of those multiply out to become 32d minus 32, neither one of them were right. How come? Because 32 is the greatest common factor of 32. Yeah, and so now this, this, comes, this is where that point that I made uh, a couple minutes ago is. Look, is there something in common between those two items right there? What is it? That means you didn't pick the GCF. So at least check to make sure that that's the case. And uh, this should be 32 times the quantity of D minus 1. So at least do that quick check to make sure you've got the right thing. So, so far, all of those are from sixth grade. Now we get in to the new stuff. So number 20, same idea here. We're trying to figure out or trying to create a distributive property problem that will multiply out to become 2x, 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds, but we need the GCF on the outside. And this, with fractions, for some people this is a little harder to, to visualize. 
Anybody have any idea what should probably be on the outside of the parentheses? Okay, try it. Try it with one third on the outside. And then use my little trick about checking what's left inside the parentheses. And that's when you will know that you've done it right. Okay? So we have to think a little more. You know, we create this problem with one third on the outside. And so we have to think about, well, what do I have to multiply one third by to make two thirds? What is it? Two. Well, and it's actually two thirds x, right? So it's two x. And then we have to think about, well, what do I have to multiply one third by to make five thirds? What would that be? Okay, so the quick check was look at what's left on the inside of the parentheses. Is there anything that 2x and 5 have in common other than 1? No. That means we did it right. Okay? So it should be, uh, I ascertained that the factored expression is 1 third times the quantity of 2x plus 5. Can I get you to go ahead and do number 21 and number 22? 21, the GCF is 1 half. And so we would end up with 1 half times the quantity of 3x plus 7. In number uh, 22, the GCF is 3 fifths. And so that would give me uh, 3 fifths times the quantity of x minus 10. Any questions about any of those? You should, you should kind of see... Uh, the relationship between the denominators and what the GCF is in, in those problems, okay? All right, now decimals. I want you to think for a second. Any idea in number 23 what the GCF might be? Jacob? 0 0.8. 0 0.8, okay, and that is what it is. And so one quick check. Let's figure out what we've got to do here. Uh, so what do we have to multiply 0 0.8 by to make 1.6x? What? Okay, 2x, good. I was expecting at least one person to say 0 0.2 because that's the common mistake. And so then we would have to multiply uh, 0 0.8 times 3 to make 2.4. So it would be 0 0.8 times the quantity of 2x minus 3. If you do a double check, uh, with what you have left in the parentheses, everything checks out okay, so we're good to go. Go ahead and do number 24 and 25, and then we have one last thing to talk about. Okay, number 24, the GCF is 2.3, so that would be 2.3 times the quantity of x plus 2. Uh, there were a few more people who struggled on this last one, but the GCF is 3.2. If you use anything other than that, then what you have left within the parentheses will still have something in common. So this one should be 3.2 times the quantity of x minus 4. Okay, so as I've already hinted, next up is the official proof of why a negative times a negative is a positive. So let's just kind of do this like off to the side uh, in your notes. Okay, so negative 2 times 0. By the way, what is that? Zero. That's 0. Okay, we know that. And we know that because of the 0 property. I've also phrased it as the multiplicative property of 0. Anything times 0 is 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a property that I never told you why we use it, but this is the exact reason why we use it. Uh, I'm going to replace... Uh, zero, the zero right next to the negative two with two numbers that add up to zero. In other words, two additive inverses. And that's the reason why we need that additive inverse property so that we can do things like that. So I'm just replacing zero with one plus negative one because one plus negative one is zero. Okay? Now, I'm going to use the distributive property. And when I use the distributive property, I get Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. All right, so negative 2 times 1, and then uh, negative 2 times negative 1, like that. I haven't figured out any of that yet. And obviously, that's supposed to be equal to 0 as we're continuing down. So, 
So we already know that negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. That was easy to prove. But we don't really know how or why negative 2 times negative 1 is what it is. But what we know is this. We know we're trying to make 0. So inside of the little rectangle there with the question mark, what has to go there to make a true statement? 2 has to go there. Because if it's not 2, we don't have the 0 that we've been trying to create all along. And so that is the official way to prove that a negative times a negative has to be a positive. Because the only way for this statement to be true is if negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And so negative times a negative has to be a positive.